How would you feel if you woke up in a strange hotel room? If the telephone operator, the bellboy, called you by a strange name? And if you noticed a strange perfume that you knew you had never used? <laughs> what week it was or how long I'd been here. Oh, I'd gotten here. Who <laughs> had been sleeping in the rump of bed next to the one I was... I listened and heard no one. I could see into the bathroom and saw no one and I wondered what had made me think it was a man until I saw clothes hanging in the open closet. The men's clothes and some women's, too. I tried to get up, have a closer look at them, but I couldn't make. But I knew by this time that the women's clothes wouldn't be mine any more than the men's clothes would be Tom. Tom! Tom! Didn't answer. He wasn't there. I didn't know where he was or how I'd gotten here without him or whether he was looking for me. Oh, he must be looking for me. He wouldn't come over to the office and find I wasn't there and not wonder what had happened to me. He must be looking and he'd find me. Somehow he would. I'd just wait for him. I'd just lie down. Oh, to lie down, go to sleep, get in. The stars wouldn't let me. The stars? I know it doesn't make sense. It didn't make sense to me either, but there it was. Or rather, there she was. I didn't see her and I didn't hear her, not at first anyway, but she was there. I could tell by her first had to be Mrs. Ferris. Who else could it be? I was in her room, and her perfume was all around me, trying to wake me up. Trying to... No. No, not all around me, but there. There, by the telephone. May I have some breakfast, please? Thank you. The usual? The 
Uh, yes. Uh, and, um, two pots of coffee, Black. I'll have it sent right up. Thank you. That was the first time I heard her. The spirit, I mean. Just a sigh. Coming from I don't know where, but so close it could have come from me. When the boy came with breakfast, I wondered how I could work up the strength to get up and let him in, but I needn't have worried. He didn't even wait for me to answer his knock. He came right in. That didn't frighten me. The thought came with it did. Maybe I was bed fast. Good morning, Mrs. Ferris. How are you feeling? Oh, all right, thank you, little Robbie. Well, the bitter with the sweet, I guess. Do you want me to open a window? Yes, please. It seems awfully stuffy. You can say that again. What did he mean, the bitter with the sweet? Something. Whatever it was, he seemed to know what it was. I wish I did. I wish to that. I knew whether or not. Well, nothing ventured, nothing gained. I, I am so sorry. I, I don't remember your name. That's all right, Mrs. Ferris. I understand. It's Mike. Are you okay now? If I could just have some coffee. Sure thing. Thank you. That's what I needed. Well, if you're sure you're all right, yes. I'll uh, be back in half an hour with the dishes. All right. Weak or not, I had to see. I couldn't believe it. I pushed myself up from the side of the bed. Some staggered. Somehow managed to propel those cotton candy legs of mine to the bathroom mirror. My hair wasn't my hair at all. It was long and golden and hung nearly to my waist. My own hair is short brown. It was my face. It was me. What was I doing here? Why did they call me Mrs. Ferris? And what was supposed to be the matter with me? The bitter with the sweet is it the pain. What pain? What medicine? And Mike's understanding that I couldn't remember his name. Was I drugged or something? Oh, my head felt like I'd been drugged all the time. Or at night, anyhow. There it was again. No, not it. She hurt you. And that fretful little cry. This is there. Mrs. Ferris. There was only the person. All finished, Mrs. Ferris? Yes, my thank you. Well, what is it? Why, it's just... Excuse me, ma'am, but well, you hardly ever touch your food. You really must be feeling better. Oh, I am. I wonder, Mike, could you get me a paper? A newspaper? From the look on his face, I gathered I hardly ever touched one of those either. But I had to know where I was. What day it was. I thought, Mike, that I might like to go out shopping. Sure, Mrs. Ferris. Sure thing. I'll bring one up for you in a jiff. What was I doing? Sitting on a strange bed in a strange hotel room, trying to outguess a bellhop and figure out what was wrong with some woman I'd never even heard of. Mrs. Ferris, or no Mrs. Ferris, I was Pat Hopkins, Mrs. Thomas Hopkins. And I was going to get dressed, 
get out of here. Let somebody else make some sense out of it. The thing to do was to get to a phone book someplace and call Tom. And if I couldn't get Tom, then go to the police. Oh, here in this Friday, 16th. Friday. Wasn't there something about Thursday, something I had to do on Thursday, Thursday afternoon? Oh, well, what does it matter? The thing to do was to, to get out of here. It wasn't possible. The door was locked. bother you, but my door seems to be locked. Can you send somebody up, please? Why, yes, Miss Terry. Just as soon as possible. Thank you. Nobody came. I waited ten minutes and tried again. Operator, nobody came. Why, I'm sorry, Miss Terry. I'll send somebody up just as soon as possible. This time I knew nobody would come. Hotels don't send somebody up to unlock a door as soon as possible. They send them right now. I was being kept a prisoner. Why? Why? Sarah's why? She was no help to me. Maybe she didn't know either. I don't know when I started wondering if I'd lost my mind. Maybe along about then. Nothing else made any sense. And I felt so tired. So tired. So tired to think. It was all too much. Again. How could I fight when I didn't know what I was fighting or why I was there or what I was supposed to do? How could I help myself or even Mrs. Ferris, whoever she was? Is that it, Mrs. Ferris? Am I supposed to help you? But how? How can I do anything lost in here like this? Operator. Why, Mrs. Ferris, I was just going to call you. I forgot to tell you before. Mr. Ferris left word he'd be back before noon. But the door. He should be along any minute now. And the perfume's stronger than before. No. Something more than perfume. A musky something. Dear. Why? Why, dear? What is your husband going to do to you? Why are you afraid of him? What is he going to do to me? Mrs. Ferris, you've got to help me. I'm the one he's going to find here. And I don't know anything about him or what's between you. Dear heaven, I don't even know his name. <laughs> I didn't need to. The musky smell got so strong it was almost overpowering. And then curiously, as the door opened, it seemed to fade. The reason was soon obvious. Mr. Paris was not alone. Well, my dear, I brought someone to see you. Oh, Mr. Paris, I don't expect you to remember me. I'm Harvey McDonald. Oh, yes, how, how nice. You look very well. This despondence. Menace. Menace. Through all that in the dark. Take away the drugs and the pain. So, six of one and a half of the other. But I keep a careful watch. I don't really want to go. But, yes. Well, now, you 
you'd like to take a look? My husband, so-called, must think I was deaf and dumb. Talk about me the way he did right in front of me. And his friend, too. Or maybe everybody thought I was so dopey from the drugs I didn't hear anything unless it was spoken right in front of my face. Well, maybe the real Mrs. Ferris was dope, but I wasn't. And maybe she had some terrible pain, but I didn't. Only I didn't think she had either. I had a hunch she'd been given those drugs for something. Otherwise, why would you be so frightened? And it would make a perfect setup, wouldn't it, if you wanted to kill her? Everybody would think she had committed suicide because she was so despondent. You could just shove her out a window and then... Something about Thursday afternoon. Every Thursday afternoon. Thursday afternoons at 2.30 sharp. Sharp. What on Thursday afternoons at 2.30 sharp? And why had Tom laughed at me for wanting to do it, whatever it was? Why had he poked fun at me? And why did it all have to happen to me now? If Mrs. Ferris had to be helped by somebody, why was there somebody me? Why... How could I possibly do to help her? I was stronger than she was, but I wasn't that strong. Not strong enough to be any match for a man. A match for a man. A match for a man. Any man. Last week, Tom, it seemed funny. There might be a time when it wouldn't be funny. Lots of things can happen, even in a nice suburban neighborhood. You aren't safe anywhere on the streets anymore. Oh, Mrs. Sellers, I'm trying. I'm trying. If I could just think. If your perfume could be. There wasn't any more time to think. Mr. Barrett came back. Smiling. <laughs> he never stopped smiling. He smiled through it all. Even while he told me why he had to drop me. And why now he had to kill me. Something about money, but I hardly heard him. I was still trying to think. I was still trying to think when he backed me up against the window, when he put his hands out to grab me, when then I... I knew what it was on Thursday afternoon at 2.30 sharp, and I knew what to do, and I did it. I didn't do it very well. I never had learned to do it very well, but I did it well enough. Let me see your paper. No. 
sniff. He looked at me because he thought I was too woolly-headed. But I just smiled. I could believe the whole thing was a dream. Or I could look in the paper and see if it really had happened. I think I wanted to believe it was.